Syracuse coach Roy Simmons will be pretty used to this scene. By the end of April, the Orangemen have five games in this month, all five in the Carrier Dome. And if Syracuse plays their cards right, nine of the remaining possible 11 games could be right here in the Dome. The Orangemen played four of their first five away from home. They're coming off an easy win against outclassed Dartmouth, but everybody remembers the last game in the Dome this year, the disappointing loss to Johns Hopkins. John Donowski now in his sixth year at Hofstra has seen his team go up and down. They're coming off a big win against Lafayette, but he knows today it'll take an effort like Duke against UNLV in this very important game, important because of the strength of the upcoming Hofstra schedule. Super Sports, a production of Cook Cable Vision of Syracuse presents Syracuse University Lacrosse. Today in the Carrier Dome, it's the 20th rated Flying Dutchman of Hofstra meeting the number eight Syracuse Orangemen. And hi again, everybody. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypulcher. Good thing we're playing indoors because there have been torrential rainstorms and thunderstorms earlier on this day. Now the meeting at hand, Dale. Hofstra hasn't beaten Syracuse since 1975. Are they capable of the upset? I think they're capable, and the thing is, uh, as you look at their schedule, this is a game that they figure they must win. Uh, this is a game they got a lot tougher opponents in terms of ranking down the road. So I think they feel that this is a pivotal game for them. If they can beat Syracuse, they got to get up there and get into those top 15 and look for the playoffs. But right now, one thing at a time, they got to beat Syracuse. Well, the aura of invincibility and spectacularness is gone with the departure of the Gates and Matt Palin from last year's team. So everybody knows Syracuse can be beaten. How do you go about doing it? Well, I think uh, in the last game that we did against Hopkins, I think Jerry DiLorenzo, they got on him, and I think if he'd come up with some spectacular saves on occasion, because his midfield defense, especially in the fourth quarter, I think they played pretty well for three quarters. Let him down a little bit. I think he got down a little bit. He did well against Dartmouth, uh, named the MVP of the game, and I think that his confidence is back up. DiLorenzo's got to be confident today, and he's got to have a good game today for Syracuse. Well, what is significant about the midfield defense compared, compared to your close-in defense? Well, one of the things is uh, they got younger people there. They lost a lot of experience, and it's just a question of, you know, when somebody goes right, uh, they had the experience. They'd been there for three or four years, and they knew what to expect. Now these guys are making some freshman and sophomore mistakes, and when you get a guy who's a senior, he gets a step on you, he gets a clean shot at your goalie, and there's a big difference of holding on to him and making him work for that goal and getting a stick on stick, and I think they had some trouble doing that against Hopkins. Hofstra has some very young and very capable scorers, in fact, a pair of freshmen. Yeah, the whole attack, Rinaldi, Carlson, and Donardo are good, but uh, Donardo and Carlson are the, are the freshmen. And these guys, uh, 18 and 17 goals apiece, or excuse me, points apiece, uh, they're very active. The thing that's going to be interesting is see what kind of matchup they get from Syracuse. Let's see who picks up Pat McCabe as a defender because he's a takeaway kind of guy, and uh, they might be up against a guy they've never seen the quality of before, especially being freshmen. That'll be interesting to watch. Everybody knows about uh, Tom Marichek's ability to score goals, but now he's being helped out in that regard by sophomore Jamie Archer out of Nottingham. Archer actually has more assist than Marichek, and that's the kind of thing, you know, they're going to slough off. They're going to they're gonna double. They're going to jump down to Marichek, and Jamie Archer, Archer's got to pick, pick up the slack. When he gets a chance, get an assist, make the nice pass, and he's done it so far. they got to be very pleased with that. And one more thing that might be intriguing to watch in this game, Syracuse has moved a big man to the attack, Brian Tully. He goes about 240, and... You know, it pays to be good, but it also pays to be big and good. Well, at 6'3", he's a defenseman, and he wasn't seeing very much time there because of, I think, an experienced defense. They said, hey, guy's a good athlete. Let's give him some time on the tack. And at 6'3", you're not going to push him off at 240. So I think it's going to be interesting. He's got a good shot. It's not just somebody they're experimenting with. It's a serious move, and uh, at least for this year. So let's see how Tully does. And we'll be ready with the opening face, Hofstra and Syracuse, coming up. Back with you in the Carrier Dome as we get set for Syracuse and Hofstra. Dave Cohen along with Dale Drypolter. And we'll bring you up to date on the starting lineups as the two teams eyeball one another on the attack for Syracuse. Jamie Archer, Matt Ryder, and Tom Marachek. The midfield, which certainly has a new look this year. Ricky Kramer, Andy Bolin, and Tom Gilmartin, the faceoff man. McCabe, Holbrook, Winship in front of Jerry DiLorenzo. John Donowski. We'll send out Joe Corello to take the opening faceoff. Syracuse and Johns Hopkins played the earlier game of the Dome this year, and Hopkins won that. Now Hofstra and Syracuse underway in this faceoff, controlled by Corello, who sends it back to his keeper. And Hofstra immediately making changes as they try to come out of their own end, not controlling cleanly until now. Maybe a defenseman who handles, and now he gives it up to Corello. Played by Tom Gilmartin. Back outside, allowed in Slager. Starts his move. 
defended on the one and one move. Coming on is Bill Maddock, number 10. Immediately goes into the slot. Here's the one on one move from outside. Perhaps a right handed shot and a high shot, a save, and a significant shot, Dale, that it was high. Well, Di Lorenzo snagged it. A lot of people have talked about not being able to see that ball well when it's shot high in the dome, but the background, but uh, he got it down and started to break the other way for Syracuse. And there are the Orange in offense now for the first time. Jamie Archer dealing it from behind, giving it up, and pulled down by Marichek. Marichek being uh, ragged in the corner. Now Syracuse will send on Charlie Lockwood, number 22, coming into the picture. There's a save and the rebound. Not pulled down cleanly by Syracuse. Matt Ryder in the vicinity. Now Nick Boynton, 17, dealing back behind. And up top. Here is Ryder shooting and scoring. Matt Ryder gets the goal for the Orangemen. And Syracuse jumps out to a quick one to nothing lead. He beats uh, Belomo, I think, 26. You see the pass coming from behind. Now there's the right-hand move. Then inside and a right-handed shot. One down low. He beat him down low. Stick side. Kevin Berry not able to make a save on that. Matt Ryder with his sixth goal. 23 shots on the year. 1-0 Syracuse. Second face-off of the game. Looks like Bob Fazy out there now for Syracuse. Long time getting this one underway. Making sure they're all set. Nobody's got their foot over the line. And it is Syracuse on control. And we have a whistle. Maybe we have an offsides. Push. Ah, push. So it'll go against Syracuse. They've got a Han Schmidt 36 out there with a big stick for Syracuse on the wing. And uh, he was there, not able to control. There's the Hofstra attack, Dave. Carlson and Denardo, the freshman. Rinaldi is a senior. The midfield, the freshman, Laudenslager, Resigliano, and Stanley. Morello, the faceoff man, defense, Malamo, Hargrave, and McMahon. Kevin Barry is the goalie. Hofstra setting up. They're down one to nothing. Stanley to Resigliano. Laudenslager is coming on, number 13. Starting their offense up high with a one-on-one -on -one move, but nobody to pass it to. Good. So they'll have to back it out. Good coverage off the ball by Syracuse defensively. Left-handed shot. Not a very good shot from that angle. But Hofstra will retain. Great job by Mike Doyle, 23, on the ball, playing defensively for Syracuse, one of the defensive middies. Series began in 1960. Hofstra hasn't won since 75. Here's Denardo giving it up outside. No, will run the offense again with Laudenslager. Patain missed his chance, and DiLorenzo with another save. Oh. His outlet, though, is intercepted. Here's a golden opportunity. Resigliano missing. Hofstra keeps it. Nice save, obviously, by DiLorenzo, but he popped it up. Not able to get it out, find the man. Maybe had a lot of time. Sometimes, you know, you get a little pumped up. You got four seconds in there. Take 3.5 sometimes when you need it. Jerry has two saves here in the early going. The book on him is if he starts strong, he ends strong. Yep. Jim Garvey, the athletic director of Hofstra, was the principal, I guess, in junior high school or elementary school when DiLorenzo attended it. There's his third save and the rebound out to Doyle, but it's lost. And Laudenschlager has a knock out of his stick, and there's DiLorenzo. Very active. And now venturing help. outside for the outlet. Bad pass at midfield. Rasigliano breaks it up. Played by Lindsey Hargrave with a big stick. Anyway, to continue the story with uh, Jim Garvey, he says uh, Di Lorenzo is known to be an excitable type. If you can rattle him early, you might have your way against him. But so far, he's looked strong. Check sticks, man coming in, 17. He Nobody switches to stick. the left hand, but he nice has no hit. angle for the nice shot. Hit. Good job. 43 and in there was uh, Eric Holbrook going to the black high tops. Syracuse in transition with Matt Moore. Now we have an injured player. Interference. Now they're going to call interference against Syracuse. Oh, yes, that's all. 
I thought it might be a served penalty. It's Winship, 39, watch. He runs up and blocks the Hofstra player right there. See that right there? That's illegal, that's interference, and uh, so they'll get the ball back. The story so far is the amount of shots that, uh, five shots, Syracuse not able to uh, get the rebound or control the ball. Matt Moore with a near takeaway, and he does. Now he's gonna be triple teamed, and he'll look to give it up. Well, he got slashed. And Syracuse will retain possession as long as they can handle it cleanly. Now, lost it there. Let me see if that's not a slash. Right, let's just check. It's going to be a push. It's not a slash. So they're going to escape with a time. Oh, wait a minute. Then I'm unnecessary. Let's check it out. We'll see. He comes up. Right there's the pass. Now that might be a little late. Let's just two check penalties. it out. We'll have to see. I think there's two penalties called. One was a 32nd. So Rinaldi picked up the push and then an unnecessary roughness. So Syracuse will be up two men for at least 30 seconds. All right, so a major scoring opportunity now for Syracuse. Tommy Gilmartin about to get the play underway. Transfer out of Maryland. Here's DiNardo who's got company with Rinaldi. Syracuse with a two-man advantage. Now the thing is here to take your time. You got 30 seconds with, you're gonna be two up. So pass it around. Marichek behind the back, Archer lost it. Sending it back lost and it's it intercepted. Again. But Syracuse with a two-man advantage. They work it in close, the goalie you saw came out. That was not a shot, it was a pass. Hofstra's gonna get it. Well, Barry had to come out. He did a nice job on Archer, and Archer limping a little bit. He had to come out, and Syracuse a little sloppy. Had two men up. We're not patient. Put the ball on the ground, and there's a cheap. Long, long pass. It's going to bounce. Well, it does take up some time. One they hope you can get somebody underneath it. And it goes out of bounds. And so Syracuse will have to clear, but they have a lot of problems on that two man up of really getting settled down, putting the ball on the carpet, losing it. Want to pass directly into a Hofstra stick, and the other time knocked it, put the ball on the ground. And one of the penalties releasable, it's over. Yep, so now the 30 seconds is a lap. Syracuse is now a man up. Rinaldi back on the field, number seven. Now Syracuse with the extra man opportunity as opposed to two extra men. Going in a clockwise fashion. Up to the slot to Ryder. Matt Ryder with his second goal, and it's 2-0 Syracuse. You look at uh, 25, Spadaro is closest, but their man down. Watch him try to slide. They work the ball around. Now you're going to see a pass. They bypass, go back over the, the group, and then you see how much of a start Ryder had, and Spadaro, 25, tried to slide, but by bypassing, going around, and coming back again, they caught him in a moving and got the ball to Ryder. About a 12-yard shot by Matt Ryder, his second goal of the game. We have nine and a half to play in the first quarter, and Syracuse leads 2-0. Nobody with possession yet. Now Corello for Hoster knocked out of his stick nicely. Nice job. Ball still down. Hans Schmidt in there, 36, mixing up. Nobody's got it. Very sloppy at the midfield here. Hoster throwing it away as they gain possession, albeit momentarily. Scott Apgar on the throwaway, number 33. Two to nothing, Syracuse. DiLorenzo will help out on the clear, and he goes deep to the sideline with a bounce pass. Now Gil Martin, nice feed to Ryder. He goes to the right hand, and it's saved this time by Barry. That's his second of the game. And Barry likes to come out, as you see. Lindsey Hargrave. Nice look, but not there, and intercepted by Syracuse. Intercepted back by Hargrave. Sloppy passing by the Orange man. Here's a three on three. Donardo will carry it in himself. And DiLorenzo uses the body, but the cage was left free. What a job by the freshman Donardo beating DiLorenzo. DiLorenzo made his move. He just couldn't separate the ball from the man. And then number 11 puts it in one handed. 
Watch Donardo. You're gonna see, there's the jump. See the hit? Now watch, he goes down. He's still got the ball on his stick. Great presence of mind as he was taken out. So Donardo comes up with goal number one for Hofstra and a pretty one for himself. Yeah, that's his 19th of the year now, the leading goal scorer and the leading point man. It's a two to one game. Donardo taking advantage of the DiLorenzo gamble. Nice feed in close and a save by Frank and then Archer entered the crease. Well, they got, you're, you're absolutely right, but you got to give Barry. Barry got down and came off his foot, I believe. He got a, a shin on it. Let's check. There's the movement down by Kramer. There, yeah, I think it was his leg, and then you see Archer take a trip through the crease. But they'll have to clear the ball, Hofstra will. They've got four men back to help clear. Down on the sideline, they've got number 17, Barra. Barry is going to leg it across. We've seen Matt Palem do this. Will he take a shot? He will. Just wide. The dream of every goalie to score. And Kevin Barry had a good opportunity right there. And just as important, they had good backup. Carlson, 23, was there to back up, and he'll bring the ball in. Andy Carlson, one on one here with Winship. Two to one game, Syracuse in the lead. Here's Barra, Joe Barra, making the move on Reed. Duburn Reed. D U B U R N E. Duburn Reed flying the defense. Boy, he, Duburn Reed is right on. Barra, 17. Run, run, Gary Rinaldi, the lefty. You hear Di Lorenzo reminding his defenseman uh, Holbrook of that fact. Now Maddock, number 10. Not a one-on-one -on -one play by Hostra, and there's a tying goal. Bill Maddock ties it up at 2-2. That's goal number five in the year for Bill Maddock. Maddock was guarded by Doyle, and we'll get a chance to... We'll get a chance to see it. Watch Doyle. Watch him right here. Now watch where the stick goes. He's going to run with him. Now he's got him covered. But watch Maddock come back. Now right there, hold it. You see the body position? He's able to get that stick out, and then watch what happens. One more dodge, comes around. Every time he moves, he picked up more stick room and then was able to put it by for that goal. There's a flag down. His play continues. Hofstra may get a shot. Di Lorenzo may be credited with a save, but now the assessment will come against Syracuse. Hofstra's had nine shots. Yeah, Syracuse not able, has not had the ball in the Hofstra end at all. You talk about time of possession, which you normally don't in lacrosse, Dave. Let's give it to Hofstra. At this point, they put the pressure on. They've tied it up, but they have taken a lot of shots. Syracuse 5-9 for Hofstra, almost twice as many. Exactly seven minutes to play here in the first quarter. Now Hofstra looking to take their first lead of the game with the extra man. Todd Stratton, 31, is on for Syracuse in the close defense. So, too, is a David Patain, 24. Here's a good shot and a score. Barra puts Hofstra into the lead at 3-2. to two. He came off the screen. And the Flying Dutchman right now flying high with three goals in a row. Nice screen. They got by Winship. There's the... Pass, they wing it around, they're extra man now. They get the ball over on the wing. And now there's the pop out, and you see how much room he had. And now that's one of those saves that's difficult to make, but that's the kind of one that Di Lorenzo wants to come up with in it. It kind of takes the confidence away from the offense. Not able to do it. It's 3-2 now in favor of Hofstra. Joe Barra's seventh goal of the year. Hofstra has the lead. Here's Joe Corello, the faceoff man, switching back, getting some breathing room from Gil Martin. That was a bad pass. Intended for Rinaldi. Hofstra gives it up, but they have a 3-2 lead here with 6.22 to go in the first quarter. Six to four, 
ground balls, but Hofstra has come up with the key ones so far. Syracuse only three men back. Let's see if they got, nope, over and back. And back in the box, got to get it out. So that'll be a mental error for Syracuse. Ball will go back to Hofstra. Rosigliano, number one, has it. Now to Laudenschlager. He makes his move, shake and go on Doyle, and his shot will stay in possession of Hofstra. Play back in quickly. A lot of isolations here, one on one play. Andrew Carlson, the freshman. Rosigliano cutting to the crease, number one. Now Dominic DiNardo. To the big crowd in front as Denaro works outside. Separated from the ball on the carpet. Picked up by Rosigliano. Nice duck under Holbrook. Can he feed? Up top, Laudenschlager. Ridden off the shot by Patain. Denardo down, still in control. McC McCabe took his head off. But he was withholding the ball from play. That's why he took his head off. He brought the ball into his chest with the stick. And uh, the whip check was tried by, you watch 29, watch McCabe, as you're going to see Denardo, he's going to go down. Now watch what he does. See him holding the ball right there? He's withholding the ball. And so when he came around, it <laughs> sticks there. That's fair game. Syracuse free, uh, free shot. Yeah, Syracuse having trouble clearing the ball. De Lorenzo up ahead. There you go. And it's pulled down by John Barra. Had himself quite a game. Nice feet in front. Marichek with the behind-the-back shovel. From John Barr, give Barr the credit. He caught that pass in midfield and spotted Marichek right in front. Yeah, Belomo, 26, is the last guy, but watch the pass. There it is, in motion, and he hits Marichek. And, of course, Marichek knows that the goalie has committed to his stick side. He goes away from it on the behind the back for goal number three for Syracuse. Tied up that quickly. That's why Lacrosse won the fastest game, the fastest game on two feet. It can change that quickly. Marichek has scored goals in 33 of his 34 games. That was number 98 in his Syracuse career. You know, Dave, Coming I mean, on is Nick Boynton all alone. Here he comes. Oh, he gave it up. You were about to say, Dale? I was just going to say, I have to credit. Oh, not right here. Lockwood. <laughs> yeah, you know you better not talk when Lockwood's got it in his <laughs> stick. And just like that, Syracuse goes back up 4-3. One of the things that you, you see, I was going to say they had been playing a very tight man-to-man -man defense, but we'll let it go, and I'll show you where I want it stopped. Watch him come along here. They're going to pass the ball. Now watch. Right there, stop. What you're going to see is you see the distance that he's got. There's nobody on him. I was going to tell you they've been playing a tight man-to-man, -man, but you see he's got all this distance all to himself, and now essentially he's one-on-one -on -one with Barry, the goalie, and you see what happens when you give him that much room. We've got a timeout with 4.39 to go in Syracuse leading 4-3. to three. Look at John Desco, the Syracuse assistant coach and the man who is most vocal on the sidelines during games. I know he's talking. He's talking midfield defense. Let's give our guy some confidence in there. Let's give DiLorenzo some confidence. Let's make sure that we don't let him get in on him. Uh, they are playing up until Lockwood's goal, a very tight man-to-man -man defense, Dave. They're contesting every clear, and they're really picking Syracuse players up and staying with them the whole length of the field. So, i got to give a lot of credit to Hofstra. They're playing a tough defense. I was about to ask you, where has Tom Marichek gone? Well, you know, that's one of the reasons why. They could not get the ball to Marichek. You know, it's if you've got a guy down there who can shoot like Marichek, you still got to get him the ball. And in this first quarter, I would have to say that Hofstra's had the ball most of the time in Syracuse's end. They got it down there. I don't think they were sleeping, but Marichek took him by and came by that behind the back, and uh, he shows what he can do. But you're right. You, you fall a little bit asleep, perhaps, but you can't forget li guys like Marichek. And then, as you said, Dave Lockwood scored that quickly. He had three goals against Hofstra, or, uh, Hopkins. Both teams with wins over St. John. Syracuse with a loss to Hopkins. Hofstra will play them. Hofstra's already lost to Cornell, and Syracuse will meet them. Here's Charlie Lockwood. 
Syracuse up by one in the face-off department. Let's see. Procedure against Hofstra. That was Fazy out there for the face-off. He got what he wanted. He did his job. Four and a half minutes to go in this first quarter. Here's Lockwood on again. Orange will work from behind. And Marichek. Nice feed to Archer. He got the pipe. And Lockwood tried to get the rebound, but there was a crease violation. Oh, Jamie Archer probably never had an easier goal than that one. Check it out. There's the motion. He comes down. There's an overhead check by Marichek. I thought he might take it. Watch Archer. Ooh, hit the pipe. The goalie's best friend. And Barry comes back. Nice job by Barry. You see him get back there with a abdomen save on that shot. Those are those hurt. Stan Krause down the sideline, number 14. Patane's in his neighborhood. Now Rosigliano. Nice quick pass to Maddock. And now here's Andrew Carlson on the spin move. Oh, he got free. And now DiLorenzo save. You see the recovery by Winship. You're right, he got beaten. But when you get beat, the, the, the real key is can you get your stick back, at least try to get on his stick, and they did. And I think he forced it wide, so Winship not bad at the end. Three saves now for Jerry DiLorenzo. Oh, McCabe just took it away. Ball went down. Syracuse couldn't get it. This is Gary Rinaldi outside. He'll go off the pick of Joe Barra. And here comes Rinaldi getting free of his defenseman. That's a shot. Hostler keeps it. In a, in a, but they had a crease violation, yeah. yeah. Crease. Shooter see, went right through. Did you see McCabe, by the way, from the backside, slide across with his stick, came in just like uh, he was guarding the plate in baseball. And uh, they're giving Di Lorenzo some backside cage help. And Di Lorenzo, not especially good out of the cage. He's up about a third of the way. Syracuse now with Holbrook on the gift to Lockwood. He splits the defense, has a man open in the middle, carries it even with a crease. Now keep an eye on Lockwood, 22. Nobody's really playing him. Now somebody comes up to play him. Syracuse going out to a 2-2-2. Ricky Kramer looks for the right-hand crank. He got it. Well, they had two guys out at the midfield, two guys in around the crease, and two guys around in back of the cage. And you'll see Lockwood, he gets a little room, and when he gets some room, he'll take the shot. Let's check it out. Lockwood's 22. Ricky Kramer. Yeah, Kramer, now he takes it back, makes a little deal. There it is, Kramer. On the shot, as Lockwood cut across for him, cleared out. Syracuse out now to a five to three lead. Oster led three to two, but it was very short lived. Yards in transition. Tom Gil Martin with a head of steam goes right around the would be defender. Gil Martin sends behind. Right out in front. It's in there. That's Matt Ryder with his third goal of the first period. And Syracuse has got the transition game going. A little fast break. Hans Schmidt started this, I believe. The defenseman from Syracuse, he knocked the ball on the ground. There's the, there it is right there. There's the chop, number 36. Now what do you do with it? Well, you transition it. You get it up and you start the other way with what? Finn started it, and they take it down the sideline with Gil Martin. Gil Martin just sprints, looking to the hole, takes it behind. Marichek looking for some cutters. He got one and a left-handed shot on the offside of Kevin Berry. And Syracuse now will get another opportunity. They're beginning to stretch the lead out a little bit, put some pressure on, especially in the transition game. Dave. Right at the faceoff man there, Bob Fazy with shoving. The Hofstra player out of bounds with the ball, which is legal. Watch how tightly the Hofstra plays these clears now. They, they have really been collapsing and trying to get De Lorenzo. Now De Lorenzo goes over, and they stay on side. De Lorenzo won't stay there for long. Unlike Matt Palin, they don't want him to be much of the offense, I don't think. Well, you think. saw De Lorenzo come out of the net once to take a shot at the man with the ball, and it cost him. Gil Martin took it all the way inside. It's still a shot. And it's still Syracuse ball. Charlie Lockwood protecting it as it went out of bounds. John Donowski 
With a minute 51 to go here in the first quarter. He's seen his team score three goals in a row. But since then, Syracuse has come back with three of their own. Syracuse kind of beating them on a man-on-man, -man, just able to play a little power lacrosse. There's Don Finn. They're, done. They're jumping him. He's triple teamed. There should be a man open in a situation like that. Got to recognize it. Yeah, yeah he lost then the ball. he loses it. That's some inexperience on the midfield. And Gil Martin vacuums it up. Absolutely. John Barr's on the field. He's been on, I think, twice, and each time Syracuse has scored. Barr is calling for it. Number 30. He's going to jump. Astro Turf pass to Marichek. Marichek, what a feed! And like a fanning on the shot that was, was Barr because he was pushed. Absidarn Lutley, he got pushed from the back. You watch Barr, and I believe it's 25 that nails him in the back. Watch his hocus pocus here by Marichek. Yeah, watch, watch Marichek. Now he goes behind oh. the back, but watch, there's the push. That's why you're right. But it was a good penalty. There was no possession. Last minute of play in this first quarter. Syracuse trying to build on a 6-3 lead. Quick yeah. stick goal, and there he is, John Barr. Well, I don't know if they keep plus or minus stats like they do in hockey, but Barr's been on three times, and each time the team has scored. Watch what Barr does. Now, there's the... Where are they looking? He just, he just slips up high, that's all. Barr was... A little bit taller than the, the guys defending him. That was Kraus, 14 there, and he just went up over his head, got a high pass, and quick sticked it past Barry for goal number seven. Nothing fancy, Dave, just went up in the air. Fourth goal of the year, and here is Fazy with 45 seconds. He feeds and scores! I don't know if that was a feed or a shot, but it went by the goalie, Barry. And Syracuse now has an 8-3 to three lead. I got to admit, I didn't even see it, so I'm going to have to see it on the replay, too. I was checking out something on the bench, and we'll see what happens. Got the sticks up, but not able to knock the pass down. Well, you're right, it was a pass. I think it was a pass. At any rate, they all count. So now 8-3. And it was Ryder, I guess, who got the goal. Ryder picks up. Goal number eight for Syracuse, and now... And four goals in the first quarter. Going to be man down. This will be man-up opportunity for Hofstra, number two. They were one of one. This is their second opportunity. We're down to 35 seconds. Hofstra... There are three goals came in succession and they had a three to two lead. And that last goal was Fazy. I thought it was. Yeah. By the way, Patane just put this ball on the carpet. Nice job by Patane. Maybe he'll get him. He does. And there's time remaining. Ten seconds. The feed. Not here though. Ryder is there and he does get it. So there's his fourth goal in the first quarter. And it is nine to three. If you're Kevin Barry, you know, you were doing real well and looked hot when it was a kind of a settled Syracuse offense and they weren't putting a lot of pressure on, but they have had some unsettled goals, some unsettled situations, ball down. And there it is, Ryder comes up with it and just quicks it by Barry. You know, it's very difficult to be able to see where the ball is and when things are happening so quickly, Barry has not been able to do much and they really, uh, took advantage of him on that one. Three seconds to go. Fazy to Kramer. Oh, that was right on. Would have counted. Another shot on goal. And that's the end of one with a score. Syracuse nine and Oscar three. The Flying Dutchmen have been grounded since they had three goals in a row and had a three to two lead with about six and a half minutes to go. Matt Ryder with four goals. Barr has scored, so is Kramer, Lockwood, and Marichek. And here is the rest of the first quarter statistical story. And Fazy too? Yeah, Fazy. Yeah, boy, I tell you, that's quite a, and now it's gonna be Archer. You can add that as we 
have it on tape, but uh, statistically unsettled situations have just gone Syracuse's way. They put a lot of pressure on Perry, and uh, it's come from different varieties and positions on the field. Here's one just from the faceoff. Ball bounces down. It's just an unsettled, fast break situation, and you see Archer just one on one. It's almost impossible for Barry to stop it. He has been victimized on the fast breaks and unsettled situations. And it's 10 to 3 now, Syracuse. And they are swarming. Lockwood, Fazy. Who else is down there? Kramer. Yeah, we got a, a push. It, it'll go against Syracuse, so they will lose possession. No time served. Let's see if Hofstra can uh, mount any kind of offense. It looked good there for a while. Well, it's the kind of thing it takes you out of your game and you, you're counting. Now there's Lautenschlager beat somebody. Bad pass, yeah. however. Run down by Rosigliano. Good hustle on his part. Rosigliano with Matt Moore marking him. Nice job, Matt Moore. Stick, stick, stick. Good Syracuse hustle by ball. Syracuse. Winship, great job. Now that's the kind of hustle that you know you don't see it in the in the final stats, but Winship hustles, gets to the sideline, gets the ball, uh, really doing a nice job of knocking the ball down right in front of the cage. So that's a lot of hustle for Syracuse. And now they work with a seven-goal margin. Picked up by Lindsey Hargrave. Here's uh, Dom DiNardo. John Barr is on again. Now this is where Syracuse defensively would like to really put a vice on these guys, give DiLorenzo some confidence, play good, tough midfield defense. And when you're hostile and you're down by seven, now you've got to get back into your offense and literally play it one goal at a time. Syracuse, good defense. They whip the ball around. Maddock with it, now one on one. Goes to the left hand. Good check. Ball is checked out of there. Very aggressive play for Syracuse. Finn, 26, going to have a chance to do it again. Oh, he covers him up and takes it away. Finn really hustling, 26. Winship putting some aluminum down there. Oh, Finn goes down, gets a couple of shots to the head. Yeah, that was definitely on the head. No flags fly, however. Yeah. Well, you see it's starts out it looks like a stick party down there and uh, that would be uh, back right in goalie lingo and look at all, look at all the sticks it does looks like a stick party Ostra has it they're down 10 to 3 we're in the opening two minutes of the second quarter Joe Donowski calling some kind of play from the sideline here is Rinaldi Gary Rinaldi against Eric Holbrook Holbrook nice job of the poke check Coming it's back. Deep, goes over oh, the he hung his stick. Yep. Actually, he draped it. It was down low. <laughs> David Patain in pursuit. This is a Syracuse team now that's playing inspired. Look at Winship. and Winship. Both of them staying after it. Oh. oh, that was a push. Oh, and what a presence of mind to release it as he was being decked. He's sitting on the carpet at the other end watching this transition. Job. John Barr scores again. Now you got Winship and Holbrook down there pushing and shoving. Watch now the ball's down, and there's the push right there. Now all he does is try to get rid of it and get it upfield after Stanley knocked him down, and then the result. And that's one of the fine rules in this game of lacrosse. There was a, a case where the offense was not penalized by having the play stop. Right. Continued for another 60 yards and resulted in a score. John Barr becoming quite a finisher. And now here's Charlie Lockwood Clean going the down legs. the right side. Syracuse will keep it as Archer was backing up. Now, you know, I'm looking at Barry's stats. He's got six saves, but... The last four or five, he hasn't really been able to come up with one, and they've put a lot of pressure on him. His confidence has to be a little bit on the wane at 11 goals to three. 
Archer went high. The rebound off the stick of Ryder's already got four goals. Who's got it? Hofstra ball. Hofstra got over there. 25 hustling over Spadaro. Dean Spadaro. You might be wondering about John Barr. He's a sophomore. He's 6'2", 190 pounds out of Fairport, New York in the Rochester area. 6'2", 190 is very good size. And Dale, he is a finisher. He sure is, and uh, that's one of the things we've talked about. Syracuse has got a young team, and people are sticking with them. Uh, they didn't expect them to dominate like they did in the past, and you've got guys like that that are going to come along, but they are young. You know, the Gates didn't play as freshmen very much, and uh, you're going to see that. They're going to improve. I'm impressed with their hustle. Oh, DeBurn Reed with good defense. Timeout. Oster is going to call a timeout. Timeout. Nice job by DeBurn Reed. He used the sideline. Didn't let him move left or right, forced him back, and they had to call a timeout. 11.32 to go in the half, and we have a timeout. Syracuse up 11 to 3. And don't forget, just about a week away, the Hobart Statesman and the Syracuse Orangemen. Ooh. Division I champs against Division Three champs. It only happens in this sport. Lacrosse. Nobody else could be competitive at that level in any other sport, but you do have a Division Three national champions forever against a, a dominating Division One team. So, incidentally, if you have watched the Syracuse Hobart game or you enjoy watching lacrosse, write us, please, at Super Sports, Cook Cable Vision, 500 South Salina Street, Syracuse, New York, 13202. Does anybody write anymore? Postcards, letters? I don't know. I teach English. I, I know a lot of people don't write. <laughs> But a class project. That's a good idea. 11 3 Syracuse. And at one point it was 3 2 Hofstra. And this was a 20th ranked team coming in and had some momentum, as you said, Dave. Had them, what, 3 2 and scored three goals in a row at one point and, and looked very confident. But the unsettled situations in Syracuse just being able to. Out muscle and out hustle them when they needed to has given Syracuse an eight goal lead. And the shots, they are a plenty now. Syracuse yeah. had trouble in the early going getting them away. Rinaldi checks his stick to make sure the ball is indeed in there. Works against Holbrook. Listen to De Lorenzo call out the defense. De Lorenzo out. And it works. Check sticks is what he was saying, and he came out to help. I hear the legs. Look at that. Deverne Reed out of Massachusetts, taking it about 60 yards. Nice feed from Marichek. Reed is there. He gives it up. Ryder wasn't looking, but Ryder gets to it. Matt Ryder's got four goals already, working against Lindsey Hargrave now. Reed will look at Lockwood coming on, and he'll hand it to him. Nice job by DeBurn Reed. Lockwood thought about it. Now Kramer. Good work by DeBurn Reed as the first midfield. Nick Boynton comes on now, 17. And he gets it. Here's Marichek. First midfield taking a break. Nice move by Kramer. He goes low and he scores. Wow, he got right up in the face of the defender and those quick feet. Bought himself a little shooting room by moving left. Ricky Kramer. Ricky Kramer, one of the starting minis, takes a low shot. Watch the trajectory. Watch what he does. Now there he beats the man. Now they start to close in, but before they can close in and get the ball or get the angle down, he takes that low wrist shot. And second goal for Kramer, number 13. And it is 10 unanswered goals. That's really extending the, extending the game to Hofstra. Now 12 to three. Corello on the face, but he's got trouble. And he throws it on the carpet. Dominic DiNardo having trouble. They scoop it ahead to Lockwood. Blindside hit. A clean one. Lockwood and Corello. This is one of those ones where uh, you really can go up and draw the little circle and the concentric circles on him. Nice shot. Legal, as you said, very clean. 
was that? I'm trying to check. Is that That was Corello. Joey Corello, yeah, the little Corello. guy. Yep, there he was. Good body position. Nice check by Corello. Maddock against Moore, and you can see as the players both popped up, they congratulated one another on that collision, part of the game. Over the top, nice takeaway by Winship. And then the offensive man laid on his stick. But holding against, yeah, against the offense, that's what he did. You know what Winship has, has been doing, you know, a lot of people say, watch, what he does, he kind of baits him and lets him come around, and then he knows he's hanging that stick, gives him inside body position, and then goes up over the head and checks and knocks the ball on the carpet. Winship, I think, playing very well. You don't suppose he learned that move from a guy <laughs> named McCabe, do you? The takeaway man? The Lorenzo now can afford to take a little journey, a sojourn upfield. Nine minutes and change to play here in the first half. Tom Gilmartin outside. Starts his move to the left hand, to the right hand, and to the net. 13 to 3, Gil Martin. I think Loudon Slager's on him, number 13, right here, and let's see what he does. Makes a move. He starts out. Now he goes to his left. Now he goes back to his right, and watch the room he gets when he starts to go right there. Stop. You see what happens? No stick on stick, stick down. And just a high shot to the offside, and the goalie not able to stop it. Goal number 13 for Syracuse. You know, Dale, that is the move you see more and more now in basketball, where a guy goes into the lane, and then he spins back the other way. Right. Maybe a move they stole from lacrosse. Back comes Marichek. Marichek playing out a little bit. Not behind as much, Tommy Marichek. Our check with it now when you are defending him you never know where the ball is going to come from in terms of a pass or a shot. Keep an eye on it. He's going to look for some help. Tended for Gil Martin. Eric Holbrook at midfield can't control it. Rinaldi has it. Nice check. He did have it. Good check. But not good enough for the official. They're going to Eric Holbrook's going to be called no possession, so watch Holbrook. And down. Kind of crabbed him. Yeah. And Hofstra scores. They break a long, long drought. 11 unanswered goals, and it's 13 to 4 now as Joe Barra gets the goal. One of the things you look, uh, Barra, goal number two. A lot of time left in this game. Only second quarter, 8-28. Faceoffs going pretty even. Syracuse at 10. Eight for Hofstra. Lockwood thought he had it. He was about to leave for Sigliano instead. Fazy trying to run him off the play, and he does. Hofstra making changes. Maddock comes on. Fazy stays with Versigliano. Lockwood guards against Maddock. Not a very big Hofstra team. No, they're not big. From behind. Nice takeaway by Syracuse. A repo man. Oh, bad pass. Oh. That ball hung up there. And now here come the orange again. Fazy giving it up to Kramer. 13 to 4, Syracuse. All started now because of McCabe taking the ball away. The repo man almost had a bad pass, but they saved him, and now Syracuse offensively looking for. Marichek behind the back to Ryder. Tough angle. We had a perfect look at it from here. It was a classic overhand shot, nothing on the side, just. To get the angle, very close to down, and Syracuse, however, retains possession. Now Lockwood outside, wearing the number made popular by Gary Gate, 22. Whoa. No backup this time. Hofstra ball. 23, 20, 22, 2, 3.
Uh, we'll check out McCabe. See what McCabe has done now. He's been on a couple of different guys. Denardo, and now I believe he's got Denardo still with him. Lindsey Hargrave has got a big stick. He wants to give it up. And he does finally. Maddock now, number 10. That's time remaining in the half. Ryder with four goals in the first quarter on Maddock. Really kind of crowding up the crease. I think the, the word on DiLorenzo is to try to screen him and uh, as much as you can. And Syracuse has been playing well defensively, though. Midfield defense, I think, has been 100% better than the Hopkins game. See his stick hang there. Patane takes it away. But then again, Dale, this is not Hopkins. No, nope, that's right. But you know what, Dave? The guys are hustling more, and they seem to be in the right positions, which they weren't at Hopkins. Ryder throwing back and behind to a defenseman. Which ship? That was a little unusual. Well, you don't, you're trailing it. If you go across, you're just back there to make sure that if a pass starts to go awry, you can keep it in bounds. But uh, he took a shot, and they got the, got the reeb. Only against North Carolina. They fail to hit double figures, or they oh, were nice soundly move. beaten ten to three. Lockwood beat McMahon. They did stay onside. Ryder picks it up. Hargrave's going to get to it first. Goalie is out. It's fair game. It's McCabe in pursuit. Nice forward roll. Now Rasigliano is dumped by Di Lorenzo. And the bodies are being applied liberally. There they go. to Kramer. Lockwood's open in the middle. They're going to go his way. Oh, intercepted by Archer. Now Lockwood gets it and loses it. Nice little duck under move there. For Hofstra. If nothing else, this is exciting, I'll say that. Spadaro got it upfield to Don. And again, they come out. McCabe made the save. This might be on Di Lorenzo. No, I guess not. Watch, there's the there's the move down the sideline by was this Donardo? And that's Ryder with him. Now he's going to watch inside move, and DiLorenzo says, I'm coming out, baby. And he Sandwich. comes out and just, yeah, they made a, and then you see the stick bounce. So they're going to be a 30-second hold on Syracuse. I don't know where the ball is. Now they are. Front left. Those are the same two, DiLorenzo and DiNardo. On that first goal of the game, when uh, De Lorenzo came out, dumped him, but Donardo, with the ball in the stick, shot it into the empty cage. McCabe playing way out up on top here, the repo man. Nice fake and a feed in close, but no shot yet. Goalie, goalie. Syracuse playing very aggressive defensively. Even in this man down, I think they are feeling a little bit better about how they should play. Nice save. And here comes Winship. A little sloppy on the clears after they get it, but the Burn Reed going to try a sprint down the sideline. Is that from? He got knocked out of bounds. Yeah, he did. It was a hit that put him out right in front of the Syracuse bench. The Burn Reed started to run the sideline pattern, Dave. Joe Barra gets congratulations from his head coach for that little bump on the sideline. It's a physical game, no doubt about it. This game has been physical. Here's Rinaldi. Gary Rinaldi. Starting a one-on-one -on -one move. Defended by Eric Holbrook. Passing through the crease and out of bounds. Officer Oh, stick. yeah, they say it's still Hofstra ball. Touch the stick. Official right on it. Lottenschlager's been very quiet. Patane had him, has him now. There's Maddock going to the left hand. But McCabe, or 
Yeah, Lorenzo had company in the crease. I was just going to say, it's getting crowded in there. He's got uh, Winship in there with him, and he's a 6'1", 195-pounder. You hear him saying hold. Smothering defense there by Duburn Reed, and DiLorenzo had to get come out on the run to play it. Now we have 320 to go in the half. Syracuse going to run a settled offense. You hear the fans go, oh, it has been a lot of action, a lot of unsettled situations. Hofstra has been held to one goal in the last 18 minutes. Tom Finn will come into your picture, but before he does, we have Syracuse taking a timeout. Three minutes and two seconds to go here in the half. And the Orange in control, 13 to 4. One of the things they obviously want to talk about is let's keep the pressure on. This is a lot of game to go on. We don't want to have it so that a guy like DiLorenzo who's getting his confidence up, let's not let any cheap ones in and let's play good, good defense and we get a look at the crowd that's here. A good, good crowd actually. Lots of people. There were there's a close football scrimmage previous to this and a lot of people checking out the Orangemen to see what they're going to be like next year. And uh, coming up at halftime we'll talk with head coach Paul Pasqualoni. Coach P. Very uh, engaging fellow. Yep. A lot, of, a lot of changes uh, being considered and experiments uh, conducted during the 15 day spring practice and some of them I guess uh, will go on. We'll hear in depth in just a couple of minutes. And important to remember that a lot of that coaching staff brand new they're trying to establish some chemistry and uh, from all we've heard they did a great job and the kids very pleased with the coaching staff. As we said earlier, if Syracuse plays their cards right, nine of the next 11 games could be here. Games 10 and 11 would be the semifinal and championship games, Memorial Day weekend. Second time the Dome has played host to the Division I National Championship. Syracuse won it last time. It's going to be a struggle, though, to get there this time. Two losses already. Marichek's pass. Deflected, Marichek not able to get it back. Finn, Marichek touches it a third and a fourth time in this possession. John Barr's on number 30. Don Finn has it now, 26. Boy, they're not trying to give him any breathing room at all. Now, that was a bad pass, and it's probably not a good time to mention it, but I was just going to say Syracuse hustling all the time. Very impressed with them today in their ability to hustle. That was a poor pass, obviously, but not for a lack of effort. Dale, did you see who the target was on that pass? Brian Tully. Is he, is he made his entrance? Now, he was the man there, number 41. And uh, he elevated off the carpet to try to pull that one in. Well, he's got 6'3 height. 240 or so pounds. That was Mike Doyle getting the head of Kevin Barry. It'll be a hold, I hope. There you go. It should be a hold. Oh, now there's two. An offside against... Uh, Hofstra, let's check and see. Hold. And then you see right there, there's the, that's a good definition of a hold. That's a nice little video for a future official. So Syracuse, what, gonna be two men down? I believe, because they were also offside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Early on in this game, Hofstra was two men down. Syracuse was unable to capitalize while they were two men to the advantage. Yeah, they are two men down. Oh, nice stick. Good hustle. The repo man right there. McCabe does. does it again. Yeah, he does repossess it. That's right. That's exactly what he does. And he is known as a takeaway man. He'll gamble. Now there he's, we don't know what happened, but he saved it from a possible goal in a two, two down situation. Let's see if Lockwood. Lockwood with a nice gallop and a good release across the windship with a spin move. That releases, they got him in the box, so now they're both released. Archer feeding a man coming in, that's Marichek. Tommy will back it off. Ryder is on as well, you see number four. We have a minute 45 to go in the half. Operating room for Marichek. That might be the best way to play him. If you get into tight quarters with him, he can just fool you like that. 
Archer lost the angle for a shot. He's coming back for a second attempt to pass to Tully. Ricky Kramer has it. Let's see if they try to get it to 41 Tully. Lockwood gets it down. Kramer. Ricky's got those incredibly quick feet. Kramer stepped in, didn't he? No, he stepped around it. There's a play on situation. Kevin Barry with a nifty move. Play on. Nice check. The cage is open. Oh, Tully took a shot at him. There's a trip. <laughs> ah, this is great. I love it. Jimmy O'Hara going to step up and say, there's the trip. Something about those unsettled situations that gets a uh, an unsettled guy like you going. Yeah, I like that. I really do. That's when I played lacrosse in high school. That's basically we were always unsettled. <laughs> nice job there. Watch the trip. There was. Where is it? There it is. Right, right there. And then uh, the ball down again. The ball has been down on the turf a lot. You know, if this was one of those games you played out on a regular turf in the mud, it'd be mud all over. Fortunately, we're in the dome. Those are the kinds you really like. Yeah, those are the ones, down and dirty. Shot, oh. Yo Martin got the high pipe. fly. Infield fly rule is not called, but Syracuse retains possession. That could be one of that, that's a record for the highest pipe I've seen. Yeah. Gil Martin in, number 44 with Lockwood, 22. Marichek spending a little more time out in front. And Jamie Archer, 11 behind as we see him running in the box and getting a rest for Hofstra. We're down to half a minute to go. And there's Marichek oh. getting the crossbar. Lockwood. Number Syracuse scored late in the first quarter. Now Gil Martin picks it up with 11 and a timeout Time taken by Syracuse. Now this will be interesting now to see what they set up here with nine seconds to go on the clock. They're hustling, trying to get things done. And uh, they're going to wait and see what kind of play they set up. They're talking to the officials, I don't know if they have a complaint. At any rate, Let's see what kind of a inbounds play they run. It's actually not an inbounds play. It would be its uh, equivalent in basketball. You know, the way Syracuse improvises, I'm sure people are wondering why not just go after it like you did at the end of the first quarter, not stop play and allow the defense to settle in. I think they're just trying to, you know, one of the things you got to do is, even though the game at this point at 13 to 4 is obviously uh, pretty well locked in, you still want to do things right for the rest of your season. And don't forget how young these guys are. So I think they want to make sure that they're practicing while they're playing and make sure that they got these kids doing the right things at the right time. So they're still teaching out there. And you can see him, Coach Simmons out there, and Roy the third, and Desco, everybody out there talking to a different group to make sure they know. So when they getting those playoffs they know exactly what is expected of. all right Dale look into your crystal ball here and uh, predict the play well I don't even know where the ball is let me find the ball first out at the top, top of the top. midfield out on top Gil Martin will uh, begin it uh, he's quick gonna, now quick I think they're just holding the ball they must be a man down somewhere and they won't have to face it off <laughs> so much for strategy there yeah so they will have possession of the ball as we begin the third quarter that's the end of the half, and Syracuse leads 13 to 4 back with the Coors Light halftime highlights in our interview right after this. Well, the first spring football practice for head coach Paul Pasqualoni is now history, a 15-day spring. Uh, what are your evaluations coming out of it? Well, David, uh, in, in a general statement about the spring in its entirety, 15 practices, we thought that the kids uh, handled it very, very well. We challenged them uh, with the fact that we would have five fewer practices this year than we've had in the past. I think the coaching staff did a great job of installing the offense and the defense and special teams, and uh, we, we were able to get as much material in this year 
uh, because of a great work ethic by our kids and our coaches in 15 as opposed to 20. Philosophically, what might be different about the team that you take into the fall from your predecessor, Dick McPherson? Well, I, I don't know what's going to be uh, what's going to be different. I think that obviously Coach Mack has done a great, great job here with the team. The, the team has always been very well prepared and very, very enthusiastic. And we just hope that we can continue in that direction and have the team uh, ready to go, prepared mentally, physically, and uh, really looking forward to playing the 91 season. You mentioned a couple of things about being prepared. Sometimes the spring's got some surprises. Did you have any surprises this spring, good or, or otherwise? I think that we did have uh, some good surprises. I think one of the surprises was last week we made the decision to move Jerry Sharp from nose guard over to offensive guard. And in just one week's time, uh, Jerry demonstrated that he is very capable of being uh, an offensive lineman here uh, and being a very productive one. He looks very good. I don't want to say too much because, in fairness to Jerry, it's only been a week. But uh, he's demonstrated some things on film that uh, show uh, a lot of promise. Another thing, uh, it's very difficult. You replaced a lot of coaches. Did you get any chemistry going with you guys during the spring? That must have been difficult because you had so many people coming in very short notice just before practice started. I think the uh, first couple of days of spring practice, there was a lot of adjusting going on with the coaches uh, and the players, players and the coaches, and myself coming out here and not running over to the linebackers and, start, and starting to coach them. But I think that very quickly as we got uh, to the end of the first week and then right through the second and the third week, I think the coaches did a very uh, uh, nice job of, of making the transition. I think the kids took to it, and uh, it was a very positive thing. A couple of specifics now, Paul. Andrew Dees, a tight end, a starter last year, might still become an offensive tackle? Well, we mini-camped Andy uh, this week. We call it mini-camp, and we put him in there for a day, and we looked at him, and he did some things very, very well uh, at the offensive tackle position, and, and we feel as though uh, it needs more uh, exploration, and it needs more discussion, and, and we're going to carry it on into spring practice, uh, excuse me, into preseason practice. Uh, I don't know if we'll make a firm decision on Andy uh, uh, in spring, in, in preseason, I think we will right before the start of the first game. Right now you have four quarterbacks. Marvin Graves clearly number one. Will you go into the fall with all four? We'll go in with all four. Uh, Marvin, right now it's his job to lose. Mark uh, elected one of the captains today, as everyone now knows. And uh, uh, Doug Womack, just an exciting uh, option type guy. And Kevin Mason really coming on and, and developing into an all-around player, David. Dale concentrates on the defense. So are you going to go after him this year more so than in the past? Well, we, we think we have personnel, Dale, that can come off the ball and, and get after him and rush the passer and, and pursue the football. I think that uh, one of the things Coach Coyle and the defensive staff uh, got done this spring was a pursuit to the football and making a violent collision once you get there. And I think we saw that a little bit as we scrimmaged through the spring. So we're going to attack him. You know, we're going to come up field on him. And uh, we've got personnel there that can really run. And we're very, very pleased with what's happening on defense. I'll say one thing. There was a lot of contact down there just in yeah. standing on the sidelines you don't see it so much from up there you come down here there's a lot of hitting going on. By the way this is sort of a, a contemporary new look for coaches. <laughs> well this is Kyle Federley and, and I don't know well, whether these are golf shirts or uh, exactly what they are but. It's like Jake would have picked those out. Yeah I, I don't know about that David but uh, it was the attire here for the spring and uh, it's kind of sharp I don't know uh, what we're going to do in the fall but uh, this was the attire for today. So you haven't decided if you're a tie-in jacket man on the sideline no, yet? I haven't decided that yet uh, we're going to we're going to talk about that. I, today I didn't really think about it to tell you the truth. Hey, one more thing. What about the other wide receiver opposite Shelby Hill? Well, right now uh, we've got a healthy situation there. Uh, we've got Kerry Farrell coming on, and uh, as I think everyone realizes, uh, Kadra Ishmael had his best spring uh, thus far in his career here at Syracuse, and uh, we've got Bryce Bevel there, and he's doing well, and Antonio Johnson was doing well, turned his ankle about a week ago and missed the last week of practice here, but uh, we think it's healthy, and Coach Goldman has uh, done a really nice job with those, with those people. Well, Paul, we don't want to rush the spring and the summer, but we're awfully anxious to get the fall here. Well, we are too. And uh, September 7th is going to be here and Vanderbilt will be here before we know it. And our goal now is to finish up the semester uh, academically well, have a great summer and uh, get in here in August and, and get the whole thing going. Good luck. Thanks a lot, David. Dale, good, thank good you. Good luck, Coach. Thank you very much. We'll be back with the second half right after this. We're in the Carrier Dome in Syracuse where the Orange Lacrosse players will spend the entire month of April all five games during April will be in the Dome. Dave Cohen and Dale Drypulcher. We actually had two games in the first half. We had a game for about uh, six and a half minutes of the first half. In fact, Hofstra had a lead of three to two after being down by a, a two to nothing score. I thought if they could uh, continue doing that, obviously, uh, I think they had Syracuse a, a little confused and maybe saying, you know, oh no, what's going on? But uh, I think Syracuse settled down, played very, very well. 
Let's check the Coors Light halftime highlights, and we'll show you just about the only highlight of the first half for Hofstra. Here they are trailing by a score of uh, two to nothing. They score two goals in a row, and then they take the lead at three to two on that shot there by Joel Barra gets the congratulations of uh, Don DiNardo. After that, however, Syracuse with 11 unanswered goals, including this one by Bob Fazy, which was supposed to be a pass. And that is the way the half went for Kevin Barry. Well, yeah, you know, Barry started out hot, but then uh, Syracuse really got to him. Uh, you can look at the shots pretty even. Saves 10 to 5. Of course, uh, Barry's been a lot busier than DiLorenzo. Face-offs pretty even. Ground balls, SU really hustling on those. And uh, clears 14 to 12. Penalties 3 and 5 for SU, 3 4. Hops. One thing I will say, Syracuse hustling on the midfield, playing good midfield defense, and really going after the ground balls. Yeah, the Orangemen really have been all over Hofstra in the middle of the field. So at the half, it's a 13-4 lead, and we'll be back with the second half right after this. And we welcome you back to the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. Dave Cohen and Dale Drypulcher, Syracuse will have possession as the second half will begin momentarily. Roy Simmons and John Desco were back to action, and Syracuse working it from behind, leading it. 13 to 4, make that 14 to 4. That's a man up goal. And that's why uh, Syracuse did not have to face off, or they did not run a face off. So Syracuse now up 14 to 4. Tommy Marachek with his second goal of the game to go along with a couple of assists. And Syracuse now with a 14 to 4 lead. Marachek. And a little bit of a conversation there with the Hofstra player, number 21, Steve McMahon. Joe Corello to take the face, and Bob Fazy. Fazy's had a very good game. One of the wingmen started in a little early. Must have been from Hofstra. No, 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 no. Yeah, and here is Charlie Lockwood controlling at midfield. Tom Gilmartin is coming on, 44. Nice step through move and a feed in close and a bounce shot and another score. Jamie Archer gets the goal. And just like that, we have played 21 seconds and Syracuse has tacked on two more. Just a pass in. He popped out from the crease and as he popped out, put it down low and Barry, who had gotten pretty hot earlier, is now really having his problems. So Kramer on that. Got the assist on yep. that. And here's Charlie Lockwood starting here in the second half. Operating room in front of him. Dishing off. In close and another score. What a start as Matt Ryder gets his fifth goal of the game. We have played 35 seconds and Syracuse has scored three times. You know, our producer, Frank Rafka, just said Syracuse of old, and that's for sure. Watch the passes. One, two behind the back, three to the cutter rider. And, you know, when you can pass like that, you know, it's not just pretty. What it does is it puts so much pressure on the defense. The ball's one place, then it's another place, then it's another place. And, of course, you can't imagine what the goalie's got to be considering. He and wishes he was in another place. That's right, and they're dominating. And now we we may not be through yet. Another behind the backer. Oh, we've got 17 seconds left in this opening minute. John Barr's coming on, number 30. Can they get four goals in the opening minute? Here's Gil Martin. There's his shot. Rebound. And we won't get another score in the opening minute. Joe Barra may be run down, so he stops on a dime. Spadaro heading off. Maddock comes on. Number 10 has it. I think they want to slow this game down and play a little. Lautenschlager now. One on one with Gil Martin gets the step. Saved by DiLorenzo. He got a nice step. He is obviously a step or two faster than Gil Martin, but uh, was not able to get it on the cage. Rinaldi against Holbrook. Bad pass, but picked up by Lautenschlager. Back in the crease and a nice save. No, it's a score. Yeah. A nice shot is what I wanted to say by DiNardo. 
Leonardo got the ball right on the crease. You see what happens. De Lorenzo, that's 32, that's the goalie. Now he's watching, the ball goes back, and now they play him to stick side, but the ball went through the legs of Gil Martin. It was a pass, and then back, give and go, and number 11 able to put it down on the stick side of De Lorenzo, so. Leonardo and the assist to Loudenschlager. Only the second goal in about uh, 23 minutes for Hofstra. Now Carello comes back. Hofstra had three goals in the first, one in the second. Now they've got one here in the third. Tom Finn. Hoster will keep it. Twelve forty nine remaining third quarter. Syracuse with a sixteen to five lead over Hoster. Tom Finn serving time and the penalty. Rinaldi to nobody in particular, but Barra saves. Intercepted by De Lorenzo, who came out to play that pass. Now McCabe. One for four now, and the man up for Hofstra. McCabe to Batain. Holbrook behind him. Nice oh. job on the ground. And here is McCabe with a good stick and a behind the back upfield pass. A couple of big sticks down in the offense. McCabe heads for the crease. Three he behind the backs. <laughs> Three behind the backs coming upfield. And in the crease, somebody wandered through there. Might have been number four. It might have been Ryder for Syracuse. At any rate, it'll be a ball going the other way. But this is these guys looking. Look at it behind the back. There's one. And there's the second one by Marichek. He was looking for Ryder, and then the ball went out. And Don't I forget think, McCabe's. That was upfield to start it. That's right. Yep. He started it all off. Syracuse still down a man. Winship now to Freddie Amaya in the game. Here's Patain. He's got room. He fires, and he bounced it over the goal. That happens with those big sticks sometimes. They bounce them out a little bit farther than they normally would, and they take that big hop. Quickly the ball back in with Amaya going down, putting a shot on, however. Now see, there's the outlet pass right on it is Syracuse. Nice steal. Marichek, what will he do? Player fell down and his stick went into the crease. And he was pushed. Illegally. A Kramer, 13, just really hustling. Let's see if we can see it right there. There it is. Ball's down. That was Kraus from Hofstra. And there's Kramer, just great job of hustling. Looking, saw the, anticipated the outlet. And then... See the for a push, so Syracuse will be up a man. Man up opportunity number three, four, three. Karen Ryan corrects me. Lockwood finds the seam. Oh. You're not going to stop that shot, Charlie Lockwood. Charlie Laser Lockwood. Laser Lockwood. 14, Krause is the guy that's got the last shot, but this is a man-up opportunity. Ball goes behind. Now they're shifting sticks, but they don't have the sticks up. Can't knock the pass down. They'll stop it right there. Watch now. Two closest defenders. Man up. He's got the stick shot. Let's see what happens. One hop. Too much room, and Barry not able to do anything. Man down opportunity for Syracuse. Comes up big. 17 to 5 for Charlie Lockwood, his second goal of the game. He also has an assist. Moore and Maddock in a foot race as they come on. Maddock has the step on Moore. And now Moore gets into defensive position. Let's see, can he take away the angle? He did. Rebound to De Lorenzo. They just started to count. A little more patient now, and he gets a 
Who is that, McCabe up the sideline? Yeah, he likes to hold it low and he scoops it ahead. That's McCabe in the, on the crease. Nice feed to Amaya. Yes! That was Winship that started out. He had to stick down low and then he got McCabe down on the crease. And Amaya, the man with the rehabilitated knee, watch, there's McCabe. Comes around, then he passed. Look at him look off. You see him look off there? Great job. And then Amaya, right here, stick side, beats him. And jo uh, Dale, he's the ninth different Syracuse scorer in this game. I was just going to say, uh, it looks like a lot of people hitting the cage for Syracuse. Their shot selection has been good. I think they've really been in good places at the right times. Joe Corello's done a pretty good job on the face-offs. He's a muscular guy. Sort of like Joe Bonacci used to play, yeah. right? Here's Andy Carlson, the freshman. Loudenslager just came in the picture there and hustled out of the box. Winchip's all over him. Had Syracuse beat. Now they've got Maddox back and Syracuse once again getting the applause from the crowd for the defense. Oh, oh boy, they what an no over sticks. the top defensive takeaway. And the transition to DeBurn Reed. Giving it up. Low shot. And Amaya is there to play it. It was John Barr, I think, who took that shot or. Well, let me correct that. Shot was taken by Paul Cannon. Yep. Number 10. Tim Corcoran's on now. He's wearing number 10. Cannon wears 20. 20. Here's the dodge by Corcoran. Whoa. Popped Leaving it right it back out. Behind a Marichek. You're living right when you get the ball checked out and it goes right in the stick of Tommy Marichek. Now Cannon. And here is Marichek against Hargrave. Oh. So the cutter, that was Cannon. Andy Bolin is 25. Well, he's doubled. Somebody open. Amaya's open. Here is Amaya feeding the crease. Nice look by Amaya. And there's Tom Marichek. Third goal of the game for Tom. And Syracuse is knocking on the door of 20 now at 19 to 5. When you watch Amaya, when he gets the ball, now he's got the knee brace. Watch him. See, he's calling for it right there. Now they get the ball to him, and now he's looking for this man right here. He's keeping his eyes open. Marichek has just scored his 100th Syracuse goal. Right there, Marichek, you said it, Dave. 100th goal. Standing ovation for Tom Marichek. Nice kid, too. They call him Hollywood. Yeah. From uh, British Columbia. Guys kind of pushing and shoving there. Syracuse going to get the face off. Checking the face off. Syracuse 18 to a 11 for Hofstra. So they'd be. It was even for a while. Syracuse beginning to assert themselves in the face off circle. Steve Bettinger has come on now. Number 12 for Syracuse. Still lots of time remaining in this game as Andy Bolin loses the ball. He might get it back. He still might. Amaya's there. Boy, there's the kid. Good hustle. Look at that knee brace. I think he was a lot faster before he had that knee blowout. He's hustling. He's shooting. Got the pipe. Syracuse keeps the ball. I want to correct myself there. Face off Syracuse 16, now 15, and 11 for Hofstra. 19 to 5 is the score. Eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Here's Bolin. 
there it is, goal number 20 for Syracuse. As Andy Bolin gets his first goal of the game. 25, Bolin. And he's just going to take, watch the stop, just a perfect shot. That classic shot, not sidearm, just right up there with that stick right up by the ear and just took a right overhand shot. And Andy Bolin, goal number one, but number 20 for Syracuse. And Lee Hine is going to be in now for Syracuse. I think they got DiLorenzo all the confidence he needs. DiLorenzo was tested on a couple of shots. Came out of the net a couple of times to throw his considerable bulk around. And uh, directed the outlets and the defense very well. I think his strength is stopping the ball. He's not bad on the clears. He's going to work on that, but I, I don't think they want him out of the cage all that often. In the meantime, we've had 10 different <laughs> orange men score. They lead it 20 to 5. And back comes Hofstra. Hofstra's shot total. Now Charlie Lockwood out of West Tennessee. It closed. Donardo. Hofstra keeps it. Donardo popped off the crease. Winship with him. Dave Bellia into the game for the first time now for Hofstra. Number 37. New goalie. Oh. And that one gets by Lehigh. Donardo scores. Stick side, watch the hop. It's going to be a high hopper, going to go right in this area when it gets there. And there's Donardo, watch it go right there. Not especially hard shot, but well placed and a nice bounce for Donardo. Three goals and assists so far. Second goal of this quarter for Hofstra. A takedown after the face. <laughs> Corello brought to the turf. Lockwood over his back. Lockwood's heading off. It'll be a time serve penalty. Incidentally, DiLorenzo left with seven saves. Well, Lee Hine, the man who what? Never lost a game he started. Who filled in admirably last year for Matt Palum is in the cage. Kind of like Mark McDonald. Yeah. Six minutes and 30 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Syracuse uh, on track to have their biggest offensive game of the year. Loudenschlager missing badly as he cut through the crease. And an errant pass that will give the ball over to the Orange. Next week, the Division Three National Champions, 11 straight times Hobart, and the Division I champion, three straight times Syracuse. You'll see it. Check your local listings for the time and place in your area. Now they reverse the ruling. Yeah, they said it was off a of Syracuse stick. Barra brings it in. Syracuse even now. Oh, and nice a couple save. Of fakes and Lee Hyde didn't bite on any of them. But his outlet is over the head and out of bounds. That was a that was a nice sequence there for that guy right there. Nice job as they tried to take him and up and down, and he was up to the task. That's another thing. You're getting your second team goalie some work with six minutes left to go in the third quarter. Bill Stanley. That got by Hyde. Yep, it did. Again, not especially a hard shot. And Pat McCabe wants his defense to huddle up. Is that Stanley? Let's see what the down. Yeah, you can see it dribbled off the stick. Not able to really snap, come through, and bounce the ball. Your, your momentum should be frontwards and hope you can at least bounce the ball back out and uh, he was not able to do that and you're right. They don't want to let this game get out of 
their control defensively. Syracuse wants to put the pressure on, and the best way to do it is to get the ball, and they did it right there. Dom Finn with it. Well, this is a sport where the, the scores really do matter. When they vote in those polls, and uh, you can't afford to have the game look closer than it really is. Bettinger outside. Agree, Dale? Or? Yes, I do. I, I think that's uh, when you've got common opponents, uh, that's one thing they're going to look at. Oh, that, that'll help. Is that, that was Don Finn. I'm just going to say, Finn, is that his first goal? It is, and I, I believe he's the 11th player now to score in the game. Not a very difficult shot, and again, just well placed. Makes the move out at the midfield. Just a high shot. And if I were the Hofstra coaching staff, I'd be worried about this man's confidence right there as you, well, you look at the faceoff. But the goalie, Barry, who had looked good, has really had it taken away from him. Ball down. Syracuse leading 21 to 7. Far and away the most goals given up by Hofstra this year. They beat Notre Dame 10 to 5, beat UMBC, Maryland, Baltimore County 12 to 8. They beat St. John's 13 to 12. Then they lost to Cornell 9 to 4 and lost to Delaware 10 to 9 before coming back and beating Lafayette 24 to 14. The thing that sticks out there, people were a little curious about the loss to Delaware. And not Delaware has been a, a program that's had its ups and downs, but that was one I think they felt they should have won and lost by one. Gil so Martin now with Finn and John Barr coming on. Incidentally, so Dave, I was giving you an opening there. If they replace this goalie, we're looking to yeah, see who yeah. the backup would be. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep the uh, folks in suspense for <laughs> yeah, a little while. Right. Long loping pass. Tried an inside roll. Good defense. Here's Barr. Yeah, good hustle by the goalie, but he'll have to clear it. But they get the ball. 21 7, 3.59 left. Third quarter. Hofstra had a lead in this game of three to two, believe it or not, after they were down two to nothing. And it was 11 goals in a row by Syracuse that broke it open. Just checking Donardo's numbers coming in. They had what, 18 goals? Five assists, I believe. Todd Stratton on uh, now defensively. Syracuse didn't get it across in time. Three thirty-eight to go in this third quarter. Just double checking Denaro's numbers. I think mean, three goals and one assist, so he's had a pretty good afternoon. Technical foul. Donardo, a freshman from Corning East. Hollenschlager, a senior out of Corning East. You look at the roster, uh, both the coaches from that I talked to from Syracuse said they thought that uh, there is talent on this Hofstra team. Some of it's young, and uh, they ran into a tough situation today. There's the man up situation. Sean McGowan, 27, into the game now for Syracuse. Good ball movement now, and Lauderschlager got the pipe. The rebound is left dangerously on the ground, and Hoster is allowed to pick it up. Lee Hine is out. Yeah. There's a shot by Barra, and it's in. Nice shot. Now what happened there is Hine was out, and then not really able to come back in, get set, find the ball, and get in his position. And Barra just takes it from front left. Ball down behind, and then they work it around. 
That's Denardo, and then he gets it up. Now watch, there's Hine just lost sight of it after he was out of the cage, and uh, Barrett comes up with goal number three, making it 21 to eight. And Corello gets another faceoff. So Hofstra doing quite a bit better here in this third quarter. Of course, Syracuse is uh, substituted quite liberally. McCabe, beautiful feed upfield to Don Finn. Amaya's in close. Oh, that was a blown scoring opportunity right there. No doubt about it. That was Brian, Brian LeBaron, LeBaron, the former linebacker for Syracuse in his first year of collegiate lacrosse. Flag down. Slash, so Syracuse will be man up. Of course, LeBaron's another Corning East player, right? Right, yeah, that's right. Corning puts out a lot of lacrosse players and football players. LeBaron is hopeful of uh, getting a shot in the NFL. Doesn't look all that big right there, does he, Dale? No. He may be run down a little bit. You know, I'll tell you what, football shape and, uh, and lacrosse shape are two different things, especially when you're running up there in the attack or midfield positions, and uh, especially midfield, but he's probably run down a little bit. Here's Lockwood. He scores again. New goalie in the game. Watch the pass. They work the ball. Lockwood looking, there's the shot. High bounce, and you see how far the goalie got back into the cage. And that Yeah, and that new goalie is now out of the game, and uh, Kevin Barry returns. Ryan LeBaron on uh, Soames, any uh, shoulder pads or arm pads. By the way, that goalie was in there briefly, Dale. David Cohen. That's right. A Paisan. Well, he's out now. Amaya has it. LeBaron is on. Amaya running pretty well. I'm wondering uh, how much that brace does hurt him. I thought he was a little slower, but he looks to be pretty quick. Here's LeBaron feeding the crease. Will he get it back? It's Casey Donegan. Get some fresh legs in. Guys want to prove themselves. Donegan has it again. Now oh, LeBaron. nice grab. Lindsey Hargrave. Hargrave took it right away. He's limping a little bit, but they get the ball up. Midfield line. We've got a minute and a half to go in this third quarter. Good defense. Good push. Absolutely a good push. Number 20, Cannon. Knocked. Spadaro out of bounds. And Syracuse once again will get the ball. 14 goal lead at this point with lots of new people in. Defense pretty well the same. Tim Corcoran, number 10. Paul Cannon is 20. There's Casey Donegan. LeBaron. He has not played lacrosse in five years competitively, I would imagine. Here he is with the ball, shooting hard and shooting wide. Not a bad shot. Outside linebacker for Syracuse University. Brings a smile to the face of Roy yep. Simmons. Brian is the first football player I can recall in quite a long time. Playing for Syracuse. Last night, I remember Jerome Hall, I believe, from Henniger, played also after yeah, his right. senior year. Oh, there's a nice, nice defense. Good job by Palomo. Took it away from uh, Donegan. Yes, he did. And back comes Hofstra with the ball. Stan Krause losing. <laughs> or getting hit. LeBaron in pursuit. Nice check by Cannon off of 
kick of Hofstra's. Scott Apgar. Yeah, Apgar, 32. Final seconds here in the third quarter. Really collapsing on that guy when he gets the ball. And all they... Parker in the Stratton, cross field. Oh. Who got it? Syracuse got it. Poland to LeBaron. Poland. Three seconds, two. And a good hard shot by LeBaron as the third quarter comes to an end. The end of three quarters of the dome. Jerry DiLorenzo's day is done in all likelihood. Syracuse 22 and Hofstra 8. Twenty-two to eight as we get set for the final fifteen minutes of lacrosse. I don't think there's any chance of overtime. One would hope not. Along with Dale Drypulcher, I'm Dave Cohen, Kevin Donahue, assistant coach and head man Roy Simmons. Fourth quarter is underway and Ostra down, trying to control the face, and they do. Joe Corello taking it from Bob Fazy. Fazy has lost his stick. We've had 11 different Orange men score in the game. Corello drawing the double team. Spotting Rinaldi. Lockwood. It'll be Hofstra ball. That's a good defensive play. Let's check the stats after three quarters from Super Sports. Big edge in shots now for Syracuse, Dale. Absolutely. They're really beginning to, well, they have been asserting themselves and I think the faceoffs 18 to 14. They've, they've really made a lot after they've gotten the faceoff. Ground ball's fairly even. Penalties have really not been a factor. How about the last minute of the first quarter? Syracuse scored three times. And then the first minute of the third quarter, they scored three times. So in less than two minutes, they have six goals in this game. Here's the orange in transition. Nice move and a nice save. Kevin Barry off the shot of Brian Gibney. Gibney 34 in there took a shot now a open area for Hofstra not able to take advantage of it's going to go the other way. And you get the idea this fourth quarter will be loosely played as Patain comes up. Syracuse retains possession. Hustling back, Nick Boynton, 17. Try as they might, I don't think the coaches will have all that much success in getting the teams to stay in their offense. I might be wrong. Johnny Goodwin's on. Here's Lockwood. Took a high oh. shot. See the spin on that ball? Yeah. Went off the stick of Boynton. Tried to handcuff Barry. Went off the stick and Syracuse got possession. We get new people in now for Hofstra. You know, you're right, Dave. They are not an especially big team. And I see him down there. Uh, hasn't been much of a factor. They've just been beaten to the situations that Syracuse was able to create and scored off of them. Now Brian Tully's on, along with Ryder and Goodwin. Boynton. Lockwood cut in. Low shot. This is Ricky Kramer. He had the very quick feet. Tully playing outside with that big size of his. You'd like to see him move down close, wouldn't you? I think so. I think I'd like to put him on the crease somewhere. Ball goes out of bounds. Going to stay Syracuse. Looks like a Tully New York shirt. Yeah, Not Tully a Brian High School. Not a Bill Tully, right. Well, one never knows. Sure. Here's Lockwood. Lockwood. Oh, nice. Sacrifice the body. Lockwood's after it, and he keeps it alive. Allowing Brian Tully to pull it in. He fed the crease. 
behind the back shot by Goodwin. Pretty good thinking there by John. It's one of those, that's the only shot I had, coach. You know, I look at the um, man up opportunity. Syracuse has been four for four. That's a nice percentage, obviously, for their man up team. They have played very well today. Man down uh, also is uh, one of six for Hofstra, one of seven, two of seven. They broke up the feed from behind. And here's Kevin Barry trying to come out. He's had himself a long, long day. The net is open. Quickly they try to get the ball in the shooting position. Off ahead. Syracuse will retain possession. They had him way out. Not able to put it in. Good hustle. Syracuse lost possession. It was a pass. So it'll be Hofstra ball. By the way, Dale, we just had a look at the uh, the Hofstra coaching staff. One of the assistants for Hofstra is a guy who has uh, just about the best name in this sport. That's right. Mike LaCrosse, who was a junior college All-America at Herkimer. And then he transferred to Hofstra, and he holds a school record with 10 goals in one game. Suffered a knee injury that ended his playing career, and now he's an assistant coach. Mike LaCrosse. Remember that game was against Virginia, a pretty good opponent. We have both Tullys on the field simultaneously. Bill is on 45. Brian is on. He's on the other end, number 41. Well, Bill's 6'4", 246. Brian only 6'3", 233. I'm sure they had a nice hefty food bill in that house. <laughs> Syracuse sending a lot of people into the coaching ranks also. Try to set a pick out there. Tim There's Nelson now the head man at Dartmouth. Victimized by his alma mater. <laughs> yeah, you can let him play down there. Oh, nice job. Stratton took it right away. Gets the ball behind. And Lee Hines' outlet is intercepted and taken back by Dave Bellia. Now Rinaldi seven has it. Oh, nice feed. Donardo nice got feed. it. Donardo gets the goal. Really nice look, and Rinaldi made the feed. He's looking. Rinaldi number seven. Watch him pop out. See him pop out right there. And now they shift off him, leave him open. Very difficult to stop that as they went to the crease and left him open. So Donardo comes up with goal number nine for Hofstra. And it's 22 to nine. Here's John Barr. Barr covering a lot of ground, but he lost the ball. And it's Finn picking it up on a play on situation. Todd Freeman in the game for Syracuse as well, wearing number six. Slash. Sophomore from JD. Syracuse fifth man up. They're perfect in that department. One minute. Two of seven for Hofstra, but Syracuse has the minute opportunity now. Ball front center. 10.20 to go in this game, which has not been a contest for quite a while. There was a flurry a minute, you know, for a while there. There was a flurry, and it looked like it, but Syracuse asserted themselves. And well, Marichek's back on, along with Gil Martin. And Lockwood. Well, that's the man up team. They they don't have two generally don't have two man up teams. Marichek dangerous out there. And he's got it. Oh. They, they've been working on those in practice. A little <laughs> French pastry as Al McGuire would call that. 
ball was lost by Syracuse on the shot by Bolin. Under 10 minutes now to go. They might get a 10 second call here. And they make it a goal. Archer has it. Scores. <laughs> 23 to 9. The only concern there was was he shooting from too far out with a net opener. Well, a ball was passed in using the goalie. He just dropped it out of his stick and uh, Archer up with it. Ryder was on the goalie and uh, those are sweet. 23 to 9. Right, Hear that aluminum out there? That's Finn who's got it. What a job. He's dropped again by Corello, and there's a flag thrown from the official who is actually uh, further away. I'm going to be a hold. That's going to be another man up opportunity for Syracuse, but what you can, what you don't hear here is all this aluminum smashing and crashing. Corello, I don't know what his complaint was. <laughs> Look at them both. I love it. They both go, hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> Uh, there's the face-offs. Latest update. Karen Ryan keeps me informed. 20 to 15 in favor of Syracuse. Syracuse with a man-up situation. Marichek faking it a behind-the-back pass. Marichek dealing it in close to Ryder. Matt Ryder again. Six goals in the game He's for Matt Ryder. Quite a day, hadn't he? Four of those in the first quarter. Obviously a career best. Watch the quick stick. As Syracuse is going to cash in on six of six man ups. Marichek looking, looking, and then pops the ball over. And Ryder just powers through. Tried to check. 26. For Hofstra was trying to get the stick Belomo, but six of six now in a man up situation. The score goes to 24 9. This uh, equals Syracuse's highest output of the year. They got 24 against St. John's. This is a better program than St. John's. And Syracuse is not done yet. Andy Puccia is in the game, number five. Remember back in the early stages of this game how few shots Syracuse had? Yeah. Into a crowd, into the net. Paul Cannon. That is shot number 55 for Syracuse. And the a backup goalie is coming back on for Hofstra. Well, you want to make sure you got something left, but that's just a high shot on the offside. He handcuffed Barry. And uh, that really comes about when guys can't check him or push him out of there. Yes, uh, Dave Cohen back in the net. All right. Incidentally, Hoster have taken only one shot this quarter. And uh, they have put the name in the cage. Hofstra with it. Puccia knocks it free. Mark Cox, 38, rushing off the field. Doubling the man with the ball. Kevin Moran out of James Old DeWitt. 24. There's Stanley, and his shot is high. That was high. Bill Stanley, 18, took a left handed shot that sailed well over the cage. Down low. Still Lee Hyde in the nets for Syracuse. Sean McGowan, 27. Syracuse get the ball. And right about now, you hope they just go in running time here. Here's the namesake. Named after a famous Syracuse <laughs> sportscaster. No I'm doubt sure, about it. I'm sure it. he knows that. I'm sure. Yeah. 
Chris Saran is in the cage now for Syracuse, the third goalie of the afternoon. The last minute of the first quarter and the opening minute of the third quarter just devastating to Hofstra. Puccia picks it up. Now Amaya. Oh. And Cannon wants some. He, gets he got it. it. Beat goes on 27 to 9. Well, they're just, it's, it's very difficult. This is a time when you're doing a game, it's very difficult. There's not really much to say. They've just, uh, Hofstra is just kind of wishing that they had done better, but they didn't, and there's not much they can do, and they just have to withstand the onslaught. Cannon comes up with his second goal, and it's not like, you know, Syracuse is doing anything to rub it in. They've played millions of people, and uh, it just comes up that way. Sometimes the ball bounces funny. If you've ever seen lacrosse ball bounce, you know what I mean? And Syracuse has just made the most of it. Speaking of the lacrosse ball, I know Jim Garvey, the uh, athletic director at Hofstra, is a proponent of using an optical yellow ball like tennis, especially here in the Dome, where some of the visiting teams, there was a man in the crease, some of the visiting teams not used to the, the background have a tough time picking that ball up against the aluminum seats. Yeah, well, you can see sometime from our end zone camera, you get, might get a shot, you look right down there, the goalie's looking into all white or very light aluminum because there's nobody sitting there, obviously. They don't want to have their heads taken off. You see, there's a good shot, and you look at what that goalie is looking at up off, and the shooters are also. It becomes... Uh, Kind of tricky. You also mentioned having uh, orange goal posts, Dave. I yeah, thought that yellow, was kind of yellow goal posts. Yellow yeah. goal posts, right. Of course, uh, fans may recall that Garvey is a longtime college football referee and one of the best. In fact, I remember uh, a gesture uh, here when Joe Morris yeah. broke the all-time Syracuse rushing record, and the referee, Jim Garvey, just stopped the game and got the football, went over to Joe, shook his hands, and a uh, great moment in Syracuse sports history. Garvey now the athletic director of uh, Hofstra and watching this game here. Very nice man, always very friendly. And here comes Big Bill Tully. <laughs> he put it on the a, ground. Tries a turf pass. Oh look at Syracuse guy still hustling. And Tully has it again. Up ahead to McGowan. Talking about the, the aid they get, what do you say, Dave? Uh, generally, what two thirds of the scholarships? Yeah, no full uh, yeah. lacrosse scholarships. <laughs> Into the crease goes Syracuse man. That was uh, Todd Freeman. By the way, number 19 there, Alex Puteau, wearing the number made famous by Paul Gate. Guess they don't retire numbers. <laughs> it, well, if anyone were going to be retired, it would be those two. Not to mention the 44 football jersey. Right. The 22 basketball jersey of Dave Bing. Five and a half minutes to go. Chris Saran is the Syracuse keeper. 18 out there is uh, Pat Kujavan. Don't forget at the end of the game, we'll have our Pepsi player of the game. Isolation out on top. Oh, nice left handed shot. Caught it. Good one by Barra. Barra's had a pretty good productive day. We'll check Barra for you, number 17. See how many four goals. So he uh, three. Three? He's played hard. Yes. Hustled. He was part of that early. Four goals flurry. was right. Right, I was I was right. Let's get this date down. <laughs> I was right. And 
there's Fazy. Intercepted. Syracuse just going to take the time, run some time off the clock, run the offense. Lots of people have played both ways. Brian LeBaron picking it off the turf. I saw. Here he comes. Look how big he is when he lost the ball. I'll try it again, Brian. Maybe now. Todd Coleman, number two, has it outside. Now Todd Friedman. Here's Coleman. He goes low, and it's in there. That's his first collegiate goal. Todd Coleman. Coleman takes a low shot. Good takes. Right-handed watch, down low, bang, one short hop past Cohen. Goal. Todd is a senior. That's the first goal of his career. Blairstown, New Jersey. Fazy having a great day on the face-offs. Fanning there on the shot for Syracuse, 47, Gary Jones. Glad I have my scorecard yeah. at this point. Three and a half remaining. Good hustle. Syracuse gets outside. Saran, 46 right there. Good look at the third team goalie. Or less the third goalie today. I would have to assume he is. DiLorenzo, Hine, and Saran. Because I sure hope everybody moved their clock ahead, otherwise they would have missed the early part of this game. <laughs> Here comes LeBaron. Unselfish. <laughs> Face offs 24 for Syracuse, 16 for Astra. The young folks here in the Carrier Dome today taking in the football scrimmage, which, by the way, evolved into a, a full-scale spring football game after <laughs> all. That's right. With only 15 practices this year, they were a little bit concerned about being able to put on a good show, but it turned out to be a pretty good show. A lot of hitting. Even got to see uh, Womack throw a pass. That's right. Padre Ishmael caught a long pass. So a nice run in the game by Kirby Dardar. Richardson, I thought, ran very well. Got to see the new coaches in action. And, and the new coaching shirts. <laughs> 233 and counting. And it's 27 to 10. Hofstra will be four and three when this is over. And it can't end soon enough. And Syracuse will go to four and two. Officials still throwing the flag and blowing the whistles. Yeah, there's going to be two, two men down or, or one. I think there's only one flag. going to be a slash. I guess they don't have any dinner plans. I, I think I said, I think they said just leave. Don't, we're going to run the extra man. Just leave the guys in there and. Well, it's going to be a whole lot closer next week, I think, when the Hobart Statesmen come to town. Yes. Division three champs against Division one. And as we've mentioned, there is between the number ones, there's not that much of a difference on most years. Dave Urich, a uh, big part of that uh, winning stain of national champions at Simply Georgetown. Simply 10, 10 for 10, that's it. Yeah. 
There's uh, a goal for Syracuse by Corcoran. 28 to 10. Now, of course, uh, O'Hara in control at Hobart. Yeah. Coach O'Hara said that uh, he didn't feel much pressure. He just went out and won another national championship last year. Georgetown coming along slowly, but you know with Dave Urich that they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. What I really like, Gales, you look at Division I basketball and football, there are so many natural rivalries that don't occur for political reasons. Yeah. In-state rivalries or adjoining states. Yet here you have a Division I willing to play a Division Three year in, year out. It's one of those everything to lose and nothing to gain situations. And another goal for Syracuse. The Orange get their 29th goal from Andy Puccia. Puccia takes a left-hand shot. Hot pursuit. But uh, good speed and just a left-handed shot up over the stick side. Second goal of the year for Andy. Syracuse sends in their fourth goalie of the afternoon. Vito uh, Loguidici or Lajudis, depending upon uh, what section he's from. I'm, I'm guessing Lajudis. <laughs> Loguidici. Well, the Orange hit 30. I don't think I've ever done a game when they scored 30. No. And of the 29 goals, 17 SU players have had a hand at scoring. So it has been spread around. There's Vito. I'll tell you one thing. Loguidici is the way it was originally pronounced. <laughs> You're down there near the Ellis Island. That's where you <laughs> Minute to go in the game, 29 to 10. There's an opportunity for Barra. What a tough nosed kid he is. Well, Judas, we'll give him a save on that. Offsides. Gotta give these officials credit. They're calling it right till the end. And now the crowd sticking around, hoping to see a 30th goal. This kind of reminds me of the basketball game earlier this year against uh, North Carolina Charlotte, I think, when they had a chance to break Syracuse's string of games without allowing 100 points. And the fans were cheering widely in the last minute. And a variety of circumstances prevented it. Shot too high. Clock stops at 12 seconds to go. Well, that's what they're sticking around for. And here we go. Last time SU had 30 days, 1977 against Colgate. One shot, perhaps. Save. Another. Yes. No time left. That's it. They beat the clock with their 30th goal of the game. So, a very one-sided game had a very spectacular ending. And we'll be back with our selection of the Pepsi player of the game right after this. Final score. 30 to 10, Syracuse dominating Hofstra. It was a 3 to 2 game in favor of Hofstra at one point. Then Syracuse broke it wide open. No doubt about the Pepsi player of the game in this one. He wears number four, and before the first quarter was over, he scored four goals. Matt Ryder he ended up with a total of six goals in this game as Syracuse defeated Hofstra by the count of 30 to 10. So the Orangemen now go to four and two on the year. A lot of smiles all around. Everybody who dressed just about played. They can score four goalies next, are used. If they score 30 next week, they'll be really pleased. Uh, next opponent, Hobart, are going to be mighty tough. So that's it in the Carrier Dome. 
We hope you enjoyed it from Super Sports. Now speaking for Dale Drypolter, our statistician, uh, Karen Ryan. This is Dave Cohen reminding you to be with us next week when the Hobart Statesmen, champions of Division Three, meet the champions of Division One, Syracuse. This has been a presentation of Super Sports and Cook Cablevision of Syracuse.